Welcome to a demonstration of the Bureau of Justice Statistics Survey of Prison Inmates Data Analysis Tool, or SPIDAT. This video provides an overview of the data tool and its functionality and provides some examples on how to interpret results. The SPIDAT is a dynamic analysis tool that allows users to analyze data from the 2016 iteration of the Survey Prison Inmates, or SPI. You can produce results as interactive data visualizations, like viewing selected charts or creating custom charts for a range of characteristics of the U.S. prison population. There are three ways to access the SPI data. One way is to go to the BJS homepage, click on Data tab, and select Data Analysis Tools. Scroll down the page to the SPIDAT tool section and click on the resource link. The second way to access the tool from the BJS homepage is from the Surveys Data Collection page. Again, click on the Data tab and select Search Data Collections. The Survey of Prison Inmates appears on the third page of Collections. Scroll down to the survey name and click on it. From the SPI page, you can learn more about the survey. To access the SPI data from this page, scroll down to the Data Analysis Tools section, select the plus symbol to expand the box, and then click on the SPI data link. The third way to access the tool is to type the SPIDAT's URL into your browser's address window. The URL for the tool is spi-data.bjs.ojp.gov. Once you access the tool, you will be on the SPIDAT's homepage. The top of the homepage provides a brief overview of the tool and the SPI survey, which is the data source. The rest of the homepage highlights two main sections of the tool, custom charts and key charts. We will come back to the custom charts, but first let's explore the key charts. The SPI survey collects information on a variety of topics and the key charts in this tool highlight statistics on a few of the important constructs measured through the SPI survey, including statistics that are frequently requested by BJS stakeholders. There are 10 charts highlighted in this section, including charts on firearm use during the offense that led to the incarceration, prior criminal history, including prior number of incarcerations, prior homelessness, pre-prison education, family background, and behavioral and physical health. Each chart is an interactive visualization containing estimates from the 2016 SPI data. Let's take a closer look at the first key chart as an example. State and federal prisoners 2016 possessed the firearm during the offense. As you can see, the primary statistic presented in the bars is a percentage. If you scroll over a bar in the chart with your mouse, a box will pop up called the tooltip. The tooltip shows the title of the chart, the label of the response category for that bar, and that bar's associated percentage. In this example, the top bar representing yes indicates that 20.8% of state and federal prisoners in 2016 possessed a firearm during the offense for which they were incarcerated. The tooltip also provides the standard error and weighted count of the percentage displayed. Each chart contains a menu icon represented by three stack lines in the top right corner. Click the menu icon to view options to download the results presented in the chart, print the chart, or view chart footnotes. If you select display high footnote from the list of options, chart specific footnotes will appear below the X axis. 
These footnotes provide additional context that is important to correctly interpret the results displayed in the chart. The first option, download print PDF document, allows users to download a PDF file of the chart. To view the downloaded PDF file, select that option from the menu and either click on the file that appears at the top right corner of your browser window or go to the downloads folder on your computer. In addition to the results, the PDF file includes the title of the chart along with general footnotes and source information. The chart will be timestamped as well with the date and time the chart was downloaded using universal time coordinated or UTC time. Note that when the option to display footnotes is selected, the specific footnotes will appear at the bottom of the PDF file. If the option to hide footnotes is selected, then the PDF will not include the specific footnotes for the chart. However, the PDF file will always include the general footnotes that could apply to any chart. The second option, download CSV, provides a CSV file that contains the estimates presented in the chart and the tooltip. To view the downloaded CSV file, select that option from the menu and either click on the file that appears at the top right corner of your browser window or go to the downloads folder on your computer. The CSV file includes the chart estimates as well as the standard error and weighted count of each percentage in the chart. It also includes the chart title, population, topic, and variable presented, general and chart footnotes, source information, and all important metadata for a chart, including the download date and time. Note that if specific footnotes apply to a chart, then the CSV file will include them, regardless of whether users choose to display or hide the footnotes, as you can see in this example. Now let's explore the custom charts view of the SPIDAT. To create a custom chart, users must first select an option for each of the three standard filters presented, population, topic, and variable of interest. For population, there are three options that can be selected, state and federal prisoners combined, federal prisoners only, or state prisoners only. For topic, there are five filter options, demographic characteristics, criminal justice, socioeconomic characteristics, physical and mental health, and substance use. For variable, users will select from a list that is dependent upon the topic selected. The demographic characteristics topic includes 12 variables from the SPY survey to create custom visualizations. The criminal justice topic also includes 12 variables. The socioeconomic characteristics topic includes 13. The physical and mental health topic includes seven variables. and the substance use topic includes four variables. To start exploring custom charts, let's select state and federal prisoners as the population, socioeconomic characteristics as the topic, and parent of a minor child as the variable. Then we'll click the View Custom Charts button to generate the visualizations. The chart that appears at the top of the custom charts view presents the estimates based on the three standard filters that were just selected on the home page. And those three filters appear directly above the chart. In this example, the first chart shows that 
48.1% of state and federal prisoners in 2016 were a parent of a minor child, while 51.9% were not a parent. Note that near the top of the page is a box of navigation instructions that you can view by selecting the plus symbol to expand it. These instructions explain how to navigate the custom charts view. In the custom charts view, the specific footnotes associated with a chart appear under the chart as the default. You can hide the footnotes by selecting that option from the menu icon. The menu icon on the custom charts view also provides two options to download chart results, a PDF file of the chart image or a CSV file of the estimates presented in the chart and tooltips. The advantage of the custom charts view is that it allows users to analyze the three standard filters by additional variables, as you can see here with the more filters option to the right of the chart. You can select up to four filters that represent characteristics of prisoners in 2016 to provide more detailed visualizations. These four filters include age at time of interview, race and ethnicity, sex, meaning biological sex or sex assigned on their birth certificate, and offense type. The default group one and group two filters are age at time of interview and race ethnicity respectively. In other words, the second chart of this custom charts view presents the estimates of the variable of interest by the group one filter selected, which in this example is parent of a minor child by age at time of interview. This chart shows that among state and federal prisoners in 2016 who were ages 18 to 24, 40.6% were a parent of a minor child while 59.4% were not apparent. Similarly, the third chart on this custom chart view presents the estimates of the variable of interest by the selection in the group two filter, which in this example is parent of a minor child by race ethnicity. The chart shows that among state and federal prisoners in 2016 who were white, 41.4% were a parent of a minor child, while 58.6% were not a parent. The last visualization that appears on the custom charge view is a table with estimates of the variable of interest by the group one and group two filters. In this example, the table presents the estimates of parent of a minor child by race, ethnicity, and age at time of interview. It shows that 62.6% of black state and federal prisoners in 2016 who were ages 35 to 44 were a parent of a minor child, while 37.4% were not a parent of a minor child. Note that when a filter is selected from group one, that filter will be grayed out in the group two drop-down list so it cannot be selected again. For example, because age at time of interview is selected as the group one filter, it cannot be selected from group two because the results would be redundant. The spy dot is dynamic, so when any of the three standard filters or additional filters are changed, the tool will automatically provide new charts that contain the estimates for the new filter selected. For example, if population is changed to federal prisoners, then the visualizations on the custom charts view will update to provide estimates on federal prisoners in 2016 only. If the variable is changed to education completed, the custom charts view will update all visualizations to present that variable of interest by the other filters previous sele previously selected. The tool will also automatically update results if options for more filters are changed. For example, if sex is selected as the group one filter, then the second chart will present the variable of interest 
here that is education completed by sex of federal prisoners in 2016. The table will also update whenever the three standard filters or additional filters are changed. In this example, the table presents estimates on the highest level of education completed among federal prisoners in 2016 by race, ethnicity, and sex. If the topic is changed to demographic characteristics, the variable drop-down list will adjust to include the variables related to that topic, but the SPIDAT will not update until a variable from that new topic is selected, such as marital status. The SPIDAT allows users to refine visualizations to focus on particular subgroups by providing specific categories within the group one and group two filters that can be selected. For example, if you are only interested in results for males, first select sex from the group one filter, then select male from the group one variable dropdown list. The SPIDAT will update to show only two charts. The first chart will present the estimates on the subgroup of the population of interest that is selected from the group one variable, or in this case males, in federal prison in 2016 by the variable of interest or marital status. If no filter is selected from the group two variable, then the second chart presents results for all categories as this is the default selection for the group one variable and group two variable. You can see in this example that the second chart presents estimates on male federal prisoners in 2016 by marital status and race ethnicity. If a filter is selected in the group one variable and group two variable, then the SPIDAT will only need to display one chart to present the estimates based on the specific filter selected. For example, if ages 35 to 44 is selected from the group two variable, then the tool will display one chart that presents estimates on the marital status of male federal prisoners in 2016 who were ages 35 to 44. Users can reset the group one variable and group two variable filters to the default of all by clicking on the clear filters button. The custom chart view includes important metadata about the visualizations from the SPIDAT. On the right side of the custom charts view and under the clear filters button are two dates. Data updated presents the date the data were last updated, referring to the database that contains the estimates used to populate the visualizations in the tool. Whenever the database is updated, this date will change. The report generated date reflects the date that the specific visualizations were created by the user. This is the same date that appears in the downloaded PDF and CSV files. The metadata also includes three general footnotes, which are the same general footnotes that appear in the downloaded PDF and CSV files. While the general footnotes do not apply to all visualizations, they apply to several, and two of the footnotes focus on symbols that appear in some visualizations when it is not possible for the SPIDAT to present valid estimates. To demonstrate the need for those footnotes, let's go back to the chart for male federal prisoners of all ages by marital status. In this second chart, there is a dash instead of a bar for male federal prisoners ages 18 to 24 who were widowed. The second general footnote explains that there were zero sample cases for that combination of filters and therefore an estimate cannot be presented. This means the SPY survey did not sample any male federal prisoners ages 18 to 24 who were reported being widowed. For all dashes that appear in charts, the tooltip will include a note about the number of sample cases rather than any estimate. For male federal prisoners ages 18 to 24 who were separated 
there is a tilde in the chart instead of a bar. The first general footnote explains that the estimate is based on fewer than 10 sample cases, which BJS has determined is too small to generate a reliable estimate. For all tildes that appear in charts, the tooltip will also include a note about the number of sample cases rather than any estimate. The last footnote simply explains that in some charts, details may not sum to 100% due to rounding. This rounding occurs within the statistical software used to run the estimates maintained in the database and the tool itself to produce percentages with one decimal place. For example, in the second chart, the 55 or older category sums to 100.2% or more than 100%. The general footnote about rounding is included in the tool to avoid any confusion by users. The last part of this video presents the supporting materials that the SPIDAT includes for additional information and resources. Before we look at them, though, I want to note the return to home page button here on the custom charts page. It can be used to easily return to the home page of the SPIDAT. To view the supporting materials of the tool, click on SPIDAT supporting materials at the top of the home page or custom charts page to show the drop-down list of options. The first option, Terms and Definitions, opens a separate window in your browser that presents the key terms and definitions that relate to the charts in the SPIDE app. Some of the information provided in the definitions is included in the chart footnotes. The terms, which mostly reflect the variables or filters available for analysis in the tool, are listed in alphabetical order to allow users to easily navigate the page to find a term. Many of the definitions include a link to the BGS report where more information can be found. You can click on the link for a report and a new window will open in your browser to display the report. To return to the SPIDET homepage to access the other supporting materials, Click on the button Return to SPIDAT homepage at the top of the Terms and Definitions page. Another important reference document available for the SPIDAT is the User's Guide, which is the second option in the drop down list. It contains 10 sections that provide information on what the SPIDAT is, what data are included, and how to use the tool. In particular, Section 4 provides detailed instructions on how to generate custom charts and illustrates how to interpret the results through pictures and examples, similar to the presentation of the custom charts provided in this video. The end of the guide provides users with information on where to direct questions about the SPIDAT and how to cite the SPIDAT when presenting or publishing results generated from the tool. Lastly, the supporting documents option provides two links for additional information on the SPI survey. The first link directs users to the SPI data collection page on the BGS website, which we visited earlier in this video to learn about one way to access the SPI data. This page provides additional information on the SPI survey. The second link provided under supporting documents directs users to the 2016 SPI page at the National Archives of Criminal Justice Data, or NACJD. NACJD archives and disseminates data on crime and justice for secondary analysis. This is where BJS archives SPI data and documentation for public use. This concludes this instructional video on the SPIDE app. If you have any questions about the tool, please email askbjs, A-S-K-B-J-S, at usdoj.gov with the word SPIDE at in the subject line, and the BJS statisticians with the requisite expertise will be consulted to provide a timely response. Thank you.